Greetings and welcome back. Kamal here and today we have an absolutely gorgeous looking integral. It's the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus x times cosine log x divided by log x dx. And the solution development is going to make use of Feynman's tricks. So the first thing I'd like to do is define the integral function i of the parameter alpha as the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus x times cosine alpha log x over log x dx. And that looks, that looks pretty cool, but we could generalize this just a little bit to extract yet another interesting integration result. And we'll do that by invoking some beautiful complex analysis. So we know from Euler's beautiful formula that e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i times sine theta. So if I replace theta here by log x to the alpha, and that makes this thing e to the log x to the alpha times i, which is, of course, x to the i times alpha. So this thing, by Euler's formula, should be equal to cosine of alpha log x plus i times sine of alpha log x. Okay, cool. So that means I'd rather define this thing as x to the i alpha over log x times that 1 over x term, because that looks very cool indeed. So the plan here is to differentiate this thing with respect to the alpha parameter. And that gives us on the left hand side the derivative of i with respect to alpha. And on the right, we have on switching up the order of the integration and differentiation operators, the integral from 0 to 1 of the partial derivative with respect to alpha of 1 minus x times x to the i alpha over log x dx. And that yields the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus x over log x times the partial derivative with respect to alpha of x to the i alpha dx. Differentiating gives us integral 0 to 1, 1 minus x over log x times x to the i alpha times log x times, of course, an i term because of the chain rule. And that means the log x terms cancel out and we can just multiply the remaining functions of x to get i times the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the i alpha minus x to the 1 plus i alpha dx. And now the integration is pretty straightforward. So we have i times, using, using the power rule, we have x to the 1 plus i alpha over 1 plus i alpha minus x to the 2 plus i alpha over 2 plus i alpha with the limits being 0 and 1. Now in the limit as x approaches 0, we get a 0, and as x approaches 1, we get 1s. So that means we have, terribly sorry about that, i over 1 plus i alpha minus i over 2 plus i alpha. Okay, cool. This is quite nice to evaluate because that means we just need logarithms. But to be more specific here, we need the principal branch of the complex logarithm. So integrating this with respect to alpha yields on the left-hand side i of alpha, and on the right, we have log 1 plus i alpha minus log 2 plus i alpha. And we can combine them to get log 1 plus i alpha over 2 plus i alpha, which is pretty cool. But as long as we don't forget a constant of integration c that we now must evaluate. So if we recall the target integral, or wait, let's just recall the integral function straight away. Integral 0 to 1, 1 minus x, terribly sorry about that, times x to the i alpha over log x dx. So clearly, x uh, alpha equal to 1 is our target case because that would give you cosine log x plus i times sine of log x, which is a bonus. And as alpha approaches 0, we should get a 1 minus x over log x. So i of 0 equals integral 0 to 1, 1 minus x over log x dx. 
And this is one of those famous integrals used to illustrate Feynman's trick. And you can evaluate this if you want by placing a parameter up here and then the whole differentiating under the integral sign thing and all that. So you would get log two or rather negative log two because it's one minus x instead of the usual x to the something minus one. So this thing is negative log two or log one half, whatever you like writing. So plugging alpha equal to zero in our equation gives us mm, negative log two, terribly sorry about that, equal to log one over two. And of course, one over two is a real number. So this is just the natural logarithm, the same natural logarithm as the logarithm on the right hand side that is. So I'm just going to write this in the proper way, which is log two. Proper way as in this is how everyone should be writing it past high school plus a constant c. And like I said, log one half and negative log two are the same thing. So that means c here is just zero. And finally, we have i of alpha equal to log one plus i times alpha divided by two plus i alpha. And now it's time to separate this bad boy into real and imaginary parts. Now the principal logarithm has a real part which is the logarithm of the absolute value of its argument. So we need absolute value one plus i alpha over two plus i alpha. And the imaginary part is the principal argument of that argument of the logarithm that is. So one plus i alpha over two plus i alpha. That is your i of alpha. Now the real part is pretty easy to evaluate. We just have, well, log taking the absolute value of the numerator and denominator gives us root one plus alpha squared over four plus alpha squared, which of course can be written as one half times the logarithm of all of that stuff. And for the argument, we are interested in first separating the argument into, for separating the argument of the argument into real and imaginary parts. Okay, cool. So we have z here equal to one plus i alpha over two plus i alpha. And we'll expand using the conjugate of the denominator, two minus i alpha over two minus i alpha, giving us two minus i alpha plus two i alpha minus i squared alpha squared over, well, four minus i squared alpha squared, i squared being negative one, gives us two plus i alpha plus alpha squared. So I'm just gonna write this up here, two plus alpha squared. And then we have plus i times alpha over four plus alpha squared. Okay, cool. So the real part is just two plus alpha squared over four plus alpha squared. And the imaginary part is alpha over four plus alpha squared. That's our z and that implies that the argument of z equals arctangent imaginary over real part. So that's alpha over alpha squared plus four divided by two plus alpha squared over alpha squared plus four. We have some lovely cancellation and that yields a pretty cool looking result there. Arctangent alpha over alpha squared plus two. Finally, it's time to piece everything, everything together for our result. So the real part of i of alpha is the integral from zero to one, one minus x cosine, wait, we need alpha equal to one here to give us the target integral that is cosine alpha log x, now just being cosine log x over log x dx equal to one half of log one plus alpha squared over four plus alpha squared. And of course the imaginary part of i of one gives us our bonus integral. That is the integral from zero to one, one minus x times sine log x over log x dx. And I really should be using the same logarithms uh, because this thing just looks a little bit uncomfortable. Log x and log x, yeah, much better. 
And this thing equals arctangent alpha over alpha squared plus two, which are two really cool looking results. And what have I done? I have forgotten that alpha equals to one on the right hand side. So to cover up my mistake, I am going to just replace this with the generalized result because you can plug in whatever values of alpha you'd like. So let me just clean this up a bit. A nice little error to make towards the end. The one is over there and we have alpha log terribly. Sorry about that. X and here we have also alpha log X. And yeah, these two look pretty damn cool. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.